Information Technology Development Agency is immeasurable as it charts and enables this encompassing catalyst that is so necessary for the enlightenment, empowerment, and development of all our societies. It is my hope that this conference in Nigeria 2014 is remembered as one of the key events that have enabled and signified an exciting era when we as Nigerians decided to usher in a bold and better future for ourselves. We must never underestimate the significance of human imagination, the ability to envision a dramatically positive and dynamic future. Every great city, every monument, every historic feat as it stands for all the world to see was one pure thought. Pure imagination acted upon and brought into reality. To imagine is to dream. To dream is to tune into the ever amazing possibilities of the future. And when we do dream, it must be big. Because to dream small is to totally underestimate the amazing capabilities that lie within each and every one of us. Our own country, Nigeria, from the Atlantic shoreline in the south, through the grasslands of the Middle Belt, all the way to the rolling hills and bright blue skies of the north, Nigeria is truly a magnificent and blessed country. Yes, we have crude oil. Yes, we have natural gas and a wide variety of raw materials. And yes, we have fertile soil that could be cultivated to feed hundreds of millions. But above all, above all, at our very core, what we have is our humanity. That magical inner spirit that glows from within. That magical inner spirit that makes us an integral and crucial part of the human civilization. And so, we must see ourselves, not just as Nigerians, but as members of a global community sharing constructive ideas, sharing inspirations, and together coming up with solutions for the betterment of humanity worldwide. We as Nigerians must not be afraid of success, but we must individually and collectively focus on progressive opportunities and solutions. Those powerful capabilities that reside within each and every one of us must be reawakened, and it all starts in the mind. If you can imagine it, and clearly see it in your mind, then you're halfway there. Then you can easily strategize, jump into action, and bring it into reality. We must not be defined by our current problems. They are not who we are. They are not who we are. We are bigger than them. We must be defined by our dreams and aspirations. We must be defined by what we can achieve. We must be defined by a better tomorrow. Nothing is impossible. There are no impossibilities. There is only a better Nigeria to build. This great country, land of the Niger crocodile, land of the baobab tree, Nigeria, where smiles are free like the bright blue sky and the beautiful stars of the night. I was, I was born in Kaduna, and I grew up in Sokoto, land of the midday sun. My parents came from Nogondaji, which is a town about an hour southwest of Sokoto. Growing up was an amazing and fascinating experience. The wide open spaces, the bright blue skies, and the very closely knit family. They were very exciting times. I attended capital school at FGC Sokoto, where I met a lot of friends, and teachers from many parts of Nigeria and from Asia and Europe. While growing up, we had a lot of books and magazines and select educational TV shows that opened up our world beyond Sokoto and beyond Nigeria. Through all that content and with information from our dad and elder brother, who traveled a lot, we learned of how big the world is and of all the incredible potential and opportunity out of there. Our dad had a library where we read about the great inventions, ideas, and amazing places. I drew a lot, and I saw art as a language through which one can conceptualize and develop ideas. I got a lot of support and encouragement from my family and family friends. 
I found imagination especially fascinating as I often engage in it to envision futuristic products, systems, and positive scenarios. After FGC Sokoto, I had a number of admissions and the opportunity to study at a number of universities in the country, but I chose to study architecture at the Burning Chemical Polytechnic because my priority was to immediately engage in hands-on practical design, which the Polytechnic offered, and to prepare myself for automotive design. At Burning Kirby, I did studies in sustainable oak designs that were in tune with the Nigerian climate, buildings that passively kept cool without the need for air conditioners or other external energy sources. After Burning Kirby, I concentrated on going into automotive design itself. I got a book from a cousin of mine which listed all the American colleges and universities, and in there I learned of a college for creative studies in Michigan. I sent them my portfolio and uh, got admitted. So the State Scholarship Board offered me a full scholarship to study at a college. Automotive design is part of industrial design, which is a fascinating field. In its purest and most useful form, it's a tool for survival and economic growth, dealing with the challenges that people face every day and coming up with solutions to them which are for the most part physical products or systems that empower people to make life easier. They also enhance relationships and interactions within humanity and between humanity and the environment. I strongly believe that no other man-made product that is so attainable by billions of people around the world has as much magic and enchantment as an automobile. In its most basic form, it is a phenomenon that accentuates and amplifies human strength and capabilities. Automobiles have become an integral part of modern life and are for the most part taken for granted. But technically and philosophically, what they have done is made us a civilization of superhumans with the freedom to individually go anywhere at speed, cocooned in our own microclimate. Automobiles, in a way, also give you an exoskeleton that is not only physically protective, but can emotionally be assertive and captivating. Altogether, an excellent automobile is physically indispensable and emotionally irresistible. And now with ICT, the automobile is evolving to be an even more exciting machine with untethered connectivity, autonomy, and artificial intelligence. It is transforming into a whole new transportation genre. Without the need for a driver, whole passengers would soon be able to do whatever they want in transit, working, surfing the internet, cooking, or even sleeping. <laughs> After graduating from the College for Creative Studies, I got a job at General Motors. After about three years in Detroit, I went on an international assignment to Germany and for about two years I worked on designing Opals. When I came back to the technical center in uh, Michigan, I worked on the uh, couple of vehicles, the Pontiac G6, then I transferred to the company's advanced design studios, where I developed the design concept of the Chevrolet Volt electric car. The vehicle would go on to usher in a whole new era, not just for GM, but for the whole industry and the world in general. The uh, Chevrolet Volt project started with a brief by the then Vice President of Product Development on the need to develop a highly advanced vehicle concept that would take the company forward into the future. Three advanced studios were engaged in the competition, uh, one in California, another one in the United Kingdom, and the third one where I was in Michigan. Altogether, there were hundreds of entries. Out of those hundreds, five were chosen for the final round. At the final selection, my proposal was chosen to go forward as the Volt. I conceptualized the Volt to be very advanced and to capture the spirit of the African wilderness and also that of the magnificent marine life of the African Atlantic shores, like the cheetah poised for an attack like a shark swimming with powerful grace and 
halfway around the world, there are two incredible creatures, one real and one mythical, that will forever be associated with the history, culture, and achievements of Asia. These creatures are the dragon and the tiger. Whereas in old Europe, dragons were believed to be five breathing flying monsters that needed to be hunted down, in Asia, the dragon is a symbol of power, leadership, and new beginnings. Although mythical, it occupies a position of strength in the minds of Asia, so does the tiger, which in itself is an unbelievably powerful creature, the perfect balance of brute force and flexibility, calm and ferocity. When it hunts, it does so with calculated strategy, out of focus and unyielding tenacity. These are also the exemplary characteristics of four unique Asian countries, which have exhibited so much achievement that they have now come to be called the Asian Tigers. These are the countries of Hong Kong, Singapore, Taiwan, and South Korea. Four countries that have created nothing short of a miracle. Within a relatively short period of about 30 years, from the mid-60s to the 90s, they would transform themselves from underdeveloped economies into some of the world's most advanced nations, moving their populations from a life of hardship to that of prosperity. How did they do this? They employed a number of strategies, key amongst which were intensive education that led to the development of highly skilled workforce, free enterprise, and the aggressive manufacturing of goods exported to the West. They had a concerted effort to make primary and lower education, secondary school education compulsory. A strong curriculum was put together, teaching was made an important profession, and the best graduates were encouraged to go into that field. They were trained to create highly competent and enthusiastic faculties at all schools. Salaries of teachers were made competitive with other contemporary professions. The governments of the Asian Tiger countries supported major corporations and public initiatives to establish strong ICT solutions that were developed directly and deployed within the country, enabling the successful establishment of the new systems on a massive scale before further scaling up globally. In the case of Taiwan, the country moved from a virtual non-existent ICT sector in 1960 to a powerful global player by the 90s, and it has continued to be in that league. The government created two mega companies in the heyday of the country's ICT development, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, and the, the, which was the world's first dedicated semiconductor foundry, and the United Microelectronics Corporation, which with, uh, with such momentum of such big companies, the country became the research and development hub of the Asia Pacific. Their technology initiative led to the, gov to the development of one of the world's most successful and actually the first 100% electronic customs e-government information systems in the world, the Korea Customs Service Universal Pass, known as UniPass. It has since been exported to a number of countries around the world. South Korea also gave priority to industrial design, the concept of creating new products that are solutions for everyday applications and economic growth. This enabled a strong industry that designed, manufactured, and exported these solutions overseas, especially to the United States. The Asian Tigers moved from just manufacturers of ICT products to pervasive nationwide users of it, integrating the technology in all aspects of government and social life. They developed a highly skilled workforce, which in turn fostered strong innovation and entrepreneurship, bringing unprecedented progress to their populations. Can we emulate this? miracle of the Asian Tigers as they did with their leap from poverty to prosperity? Can we also emulate their success as high caliber ICT global innovators and exporters? We as Nigerians are now at an exciting moment in our country's history. We have never been ordinary. We may have had challenges, but we have never lost our zeal. It is now our turn to muster and leverage all our capabilities and usher in a new era of advanced progress and abundance. In effect, to bring back the greatness of our people, to recapture the magic and prosperity of our histories,
cultures, kingdoms, and empires. To bring back the era when our societies engaged the authentic capabilities of all citizens and prospered. And so the answer is yes. Just as the Asian tigers transformed their economies and became crucial players in the global ICT sector, we too can do the same and must be done in an even shorter period. Our greatest enabler is intelligent technology. Technology that is in tune with Africa. Technology in tune with our cultures, histories, climate, and geography. And the encompassing phenomenon to bring about this transformation is a nationwide development and adoption of the most advanced ICT. So, who are we? Who are the Nigerians? Environmental consciousness has now become an integral part of global development. Nature is now once again no longer seen as a force to conquer, but rather it is seen as a medium from which to learn, efficiently draw energy, and live in harmony with it. And when we do observe nature, we see that we live on a truly magical planet, a gigantic orb of life hurtling through space. Everywhere we look around us, we are surrounded by wonders of our natural world. From the tiny leaf, only fractions of a millimeter thick, and yet a highly efficient factory, to the amazing sea rays that glide within the deep waters of the Atlantic planet Earth is a perfect balance of beauty and practicality. So, in these days of environmental consciousness, sustainability and renewability, who more environmental than the African? Who more sustainable than the Nigerian? Who better to understand this global movement and position themselves as high caliber creators of world-class solutions than Nigerian innovators. Africa is a unique continent with extreme climates and geographies, extreme heat and rough terrain. But these are not problems. These are not negatives. These are what Africa is. These are the beauty of Africa and are the magic and the characteristics that have for millennia engaged the people and crafted them with immeasurable wisdom, virtue and prowess. Characteristics that have fashioned a continent full of wonder, awe, and adventure, and given us the magnificent Obudu Hills, Serengeti and Gorongoro, the incredible Zambezi River, and the beautiful landscapes of the Sahel. Yes, there are challenges in infrastructure, energy supply, transportation, and education, but that is just what they are, challenges. They are not us. We are bigger than them. Mm. Having the right technology is crucial in any society or locality. A major reason for the failure of a lot of infrastructure and systems in our nation is because they were not fundamentally designed for our applications. They do not fall within the critical physical and mental patterns that are natural for Africa. And so they don't fail because of an inherent lack of human support. It is no surprise that our physical environment is absolutely different from the conceptual birthplace of a lot of the technology that finds itself transplanted in Africa. From time immemorial, Africans have had tools, systems, and technologies that have assisted them in their daily lives. These technologies have been developed and evolved over time to be the most conducive for our people and environment. For example, most of Africa is hot and historically homes have been built to be com comfortable with local natural materials and passive cooling technologies without the need for added energy. In the last couple of decades, we have equated progress with completely disregarding and forgetting a lot of our natural and very effective technologies. This is not right. We must not dismiss them, but rather we must build on them. So as we progress, we must leverage advanced product development and intelligent information technology coupled with our honed inherited understanding of extreme circumstances to achieve advanced new systems that best suit our terrain, climate, psyche, and histories. Therein will lie the secret to the success of our ICT products and services, making them authentically African for the unparalleled extreme African solutions and hence effective for the world. And so, imagine integrating these advanced effective technologies into our cities, infrastructures, institutions, and their patterns of life. 
making them the pride and jewel of modernity while upholding the very core values of our heritage and our respect for the magnificent natural world around us. For example, based on our cultures and ways of living, we have millions of children spread all across the country who cannot come to a traditional classroom because they are an integral part of their family's relocation. Some are not even in their towns or settlements, but are out there farming, herding, fishing and hunting. So how do we take education to these kids, wherever they may be? How do we develop a self-adapted and untethered educational system with intelligent networks, specialized sustainable hardware and software that would reach and engage these students while they are out there farming, hunting and fishing? Second example, a majority of our citizens live in rural areas with no access to public or modern private services. The delivery of medicine, goods, and either supplies is a challenge over inhospitable terrain, across unbridged rivers, and impenetrable forests. How do we provide intelligent logistic systems that can autonomously and safely service every town, village, and settlement? make it irrelevant the lack of roads to any of these places, to operate either by air or by land, perhaps autonomous delivery drones, or self-driving off-road solutions with the capability and efficiency to traverse any natural terrain and leaving it pristine and undisturbed. The two examples mentioned above are about a window to the advanced future of Nigeria and Africa. Without expensive roads crisscrossing and destroying natural habitats, we can reach every citizen of this country with essential goods and services. Without building a physical school in every village and settlement, we can give world-class education to each and every Nigerian child. <laughs> While maintaining the natural environments of Africa, we can, through leveraging strategic ICT solutions, create advanced nations where our people will once again live in harmony with nature, in abundance, peace, and prosperity. Once we pioneer and develop these types of advanced and highly applicable ICT solutions, we can then very easily scale them up and provide them to the world. And so, what are some of the enablers to creating these Africa conducive ICT solutions? First and foremost is the acknowledgement of the miracle that we have all around us the magic that is Africa that must be preserved. Second, we must establish industrial design courses and make the profession an integral factor of ICT and general technological development through this discipline of creating hardware, innovation and development. We must set up departments at tertiary institutions and integrate the course in the curriculum of secondary schools. We must establish we must have the establishment of robotics and artificial intelligence courses right from secondary school to degree courses at universities, polytechnics, and specialized schools. We need to engage Nigerian professionals in the diaspora in collaborative initiatives and projects to merge their collective international experiences and contacts with Nigerian-based experts and opportunities. It is an exciting new world and we must be strong, valuable members of it. We must go for the seemingly impossible and make it reality. We must brave new paths with no fear. We must all come together and courageously strive towards the achievement of all that which will positively and most dynamically impact multiple facets of the Nigerian human experience. Thank you. <laughs> Concept of the Chevrolet Volt electric car. The vehicle would go on to usher in a whole new era, not just for GM, but for the whole industry and the world in general. <laughs> the uh, Chevrolet Volt project started with a brief by the then Vice President of Product Development on the need to develop a highly advanced vehicle concept that would take the company forward into the future. Three advanced studios were engaged in the competition. Uh, one in California, another one in the United Kingdom, and the third one where I was in Michigan. Altogether, there were hundreds of entries. Out of those hundreds, five were chosen for the final round. At the final selection, my proposal was chosen to go forward as the vote.
I conceptualize the vault to be very advanced and to capture the spirit of the African wilderness and also that of the magnificent marine life of the African Atlantic shores, like the cheetah poised for an attack, like a shark swimming with powerful grace 